All right, today we have a new 48 volt battery from Allgraphy. Let's open it up. Okay, so we got our product manual and uh, product brochure. And there's the battery. So this is a 48 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Let's get a weight on this guy. And we have come in at 82.6 pounds. And according to the front of the product manual, it says it has low temperature cutoff. And inside the manual, it says we can do a max continuous charging current of 50 amps, and we can do a max continuous discharge current of 100 amps. We can place four of these in parallel. We can do a max burst current at 500 amps. It says for five to 10 seconds. And it is showing that it has an app, so this must be a smart BMS, so we should be able to download an app to connect to this. And here's the app, and here is the battery here, so let's go ahead and connect to it. And there it is. So it's showing 50% state of charge. Showing our temperatures and our cell level voltages. So very nice. Let's go ahead and get this guy fully charged up. All right, so I've got the charger hooked up. Let's plug it in. And we are now charging. And it's showing that we are putting in 879 watts. So we'll just let that charge up and I'll be back when it's complete. All right, so the battery is fully charged now. And I've got my shunt hooked up and we are going to do a capacity test. So let's go ahead and turn on the inverter. And then I've got my air conditioner hooked up to the inverter. So let's turn that on. And let's try it on high. Okay, so we're starting to ramp up in the power here. Over 400 watts now. All right, so it looks like we're doing a little over 600 watts. So I'll just let that continue on and I'll be back when the battery is fully depleted. All right, you guys, uh, we are still going. Uh, we are down to 4% left uh, in the battery. Now, the interesting part, and I think you guys will be interested in this. Uh, a lot of you ask this question every time I run my AC off of batteries. I've already done a video about that, and you guys may have watched it. Um, but this thing has been running off a of battery since about 6:30 yesterday and it is now it is now 10:32 the next morning <laughs> so it has been running all that time and we are uh, down to 4% now i do have a new room that i built uh, so i've got a wall that i put up in my sunroom that splits it off so it is enclosed and this wall is fully insulated now of course I've got this big you know glass pane right here that's obviously not insulated and the roof is not insulated as, as well there may be something I can do about that but uh, it's flat up there I can't really get into it I don't think unless uh, somehow I can go through the attic I'm not sure but uh, I thought that'd be interesting to you guys. Now, it's, it has cooled down significantly from what it has been. So it's not very hot. Uh, it's really, you know, it's like in the 80s. Uh, right now it's just early in the morning. So we're like, you know, low 80s. Uh, yesterday it was maybe in the high 80s. So it hasn't been super hot the last 
day or so. Prior days, it was in the hundreds. <laughs> so that would be a dramatic difference as far as how long that AC would run off that battery. And inside here, you know, we're at 68. And if we actually go over here where the AC is at, 67 pointed at the AC we've got like 60 degree air coming out of there and I actually a couple of hours ago opened this window so I could get it to hurry up and finish this test <laughs> because like it literally was getting so cold in here that the AC was going down to I think at one point I saw like 160 watts <laughs> so I just opened this up so I could hopefully warm it up in here a little bit so it would draw some more power all right so we're we're definitely almost there i'll be back in just a bit all right so we are down to one percent uh, saying that we have 1.4 amp hours still to go and another thing i discovered about this battery it actually works with other battery apps so this is the overkill solar battery app and it works just fine we can see the individual cell voltages and all the data and it also works with the Shizing JBD BMS app so we're seeing we're drawing 450 watts yeah I thought that was pretty neat you don't actually have to use their app you can pretty much use any app that I'm assuming supports a JBD yeah, I'm not sure if this is an actual JBD BMS in here. It may be, or maybe it just speaks the same language. I'm not sure. Okay, so we're showing 0%. Uh, however, we still do have 0.7 amp hours still to go. Uh, so we'll just let it keep on going there. Um, you know, looking at our app, we're showing our cell voltages. Uh, mostly around 2.8, 2.9. So still good there. Those are typically good to down to about 2.5. So yeah, I'm pretty sure we are definitely going to pull the full 100 amp hours here. All right, you guys, here we go. We are about to hit full 100. There we go. We are now, we have now discharged a full 100 amp hours out of this battery so it has passed the capacity test and looking at the app um, it's showing our lowest cell is 2.75 so we're still gonna be discharging out of this battery we've got a little extra to go so I'll just let it continue on I usually shut it down when the inverter starts complaining and that's when we'll stop. Okay, so it actually shut down. It actually shut down a little bit earlier than I thought it would. Uh, the lowest cell voltage was two. Well, it's lowest cell voltage right now is showing 2.7. I think it was just slightly below that. A lot of batteries will shut down at 2.5, but, uh, yeah, so it's already showing a cell undervolt. So the, these guys are a little bit more conservative, it seems, uh, to where they allow their cells to go down to. Which is fine, because it absolutely did pull the 100 amp hours. All right, guys, so it's that time where we open it up. And I've already worked on the lid, so it should come right off. There we go, so cells all wrapped up in, looks like fiberboard and then this super large heat shrink. Silicone jacketed wire, it says 200 Celsius on it. It's a double eight gauge for the negative and then a double eight gauge for the positive. I do see the little Bluetooth dongle down there. I think on this one, I'm gonna make a little cut in this heat shrink stuff and maybe we'll be able to open it up. Mm. 
Okay. Then we still got to do the same to this fiber board up here. So we'll cut the tape holding it. There we go. Uh, so we've got the BMS. We've got another layer of fiber board here. But I think I do see that these are prismatic cells. Okay, so I think the way this is arranged, I think the cells, there's eight cells across here, but they are laying like on their sides. And I believe this side is just literally the opposite of that. And then there's this big bus bar uh, connecting the two sides together in series. Yeah, so then we have our main positive here and then our main negative right here. So there's our temperature leads down here. And I may not be able to get to them. Oh, maybe. There we go. <laughs> I found them right there. Luckily, they were just glued to the top of the cells right here and uh, it was accessible so let's freeze these up and see if the low temp protection does work all right so i got the charger hooked up and we are putting in almost 10 amps here so let me freeze these guys up and see if that will stop charging Yep, there we go. And it says under tent right there. So we do indeed have low temperature protection. Awesome. All right guys, so I think that's gonna wrap up the video. Let me know in the description what you think about this battery. I'll leave links in the description and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>